Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, PO Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036369, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. does God want to achieve by that? From here, right from this beginning, God spelled that primary goal out. And it is so that they shall become one flesh. And in Matthew chapter 19, verse 5, the Lord Jesus himself again spelt out this goal. Matthew 19, verse 5. Maybe from verse 4. And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. For you to know that this goal 
that has been in the mind of God from the beginning is still in the mind of God, even in the New Testament. And until now, this same goal is in the mind of God concerning our relationships. So that the two shall become one flesh. Ephesians chapter 30, I mean chapter 5, verse 30 and 31. Ephesians 5, 30 and 31. <clears throat> For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. You will wonder why God keeps repeating exactly the same scripture, right from Genesis to the New Testament. If it is not important, God will not keep repeating it. It is so that it will enter our ears and our hearts that there is, there is something to achieve before you achieve something. There is a goal to pursue before you will accomplish God's purpose. The reason why we must relate together properly in harmony as husband and wife is so that the two shall become one flesh. Without that, the purpose of God for our marriage will not be accomplished. You know, God delights in teamwork. God delights in using teams to achieve his purpose. But it is a team that is, that is united. A team that has worked on themselves to become one that God delights in using. God clearly stated it in the scriptures that when a team of two or three work together in agreement, they are going to achieve a great, a great thing in their relationship. Much more than when one man walks alone. Even God himself exemplified it in creation. He did not create anything alone. You remember that while God was speaking the word, the spirit of God was brooding over the waters in Genesis chapter 1. So God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, the Trinity, worked together as one. It was a teamwork. The creation itself was a teamwork, and they were one. You will never hear any of the Trinity, any aspect of the Trinity, complaining against the other one. You will never see one uh, proud against the other, arrogating himself against the other. God the Father will never claim, you know, claim superiority over God the Son, over God the Spirit. You will hear the Bible says, God the Father said unto God the Son, thy throne, O God is forever and ever. God the Father calling the Son God. And you will hear the Spirit not, not speaking about himself. He will only glorify God the Son. They were united. God delights in teamwork. And because of the yield that it normally brings, you know, we have been reading Ecclesiastes chapter 4. The Bible says in verse 9, two are better than, than one. Because of what? 
they have a good reward for their labor. Two are better than one. As if God is saying, look, this is my delight. I delight in using two people who are united because one shall chase a thousand, what shall two chase? Ten thousand. It's not even two thousand. There is a greater yield when two people work together as one. So God normally delights in working with a team. He doesn't want long rangers. And he gave us the advantages of teamwork in that Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Maybe we should read it again, just to read it, so that we will see the advantages. Some will say, why, why must God give me a wife? Why can't I do my thing alone? Eh? When I'm alone, there is no quarrel with myself. I can do it. I don't need a woman. But God is saying two are better than one. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. If they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. God delights in teamwork because there is, the, there is the possibility of falling. And God does not want his, his servant, his man, his woman to fall. So he already provided for the rising of a man so that he will not fall. That's an advantage of two people working together as one. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? You can see the advantage. There is cold outside. But God expects that at home, you will find warmth. So that the purpose, the overall purpose of God for your life will not be jeopardized because of cold out there, loneliness out there. He provided warmth, warmth of fellowship, warmth even on the bed, on the conjugal bed, warmth. Anything driving you from outside, once you run home, there is warmth of acceptance, there is warmth of fellowship, there is warmth of sexual relationship together as husband and wife. God made that provision. He made that provision when a husband and a wife live together in unity. And he said, though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Look at the advantage of teaming up together in the purpose of God. Spiritual warfare is, you know, you become victorious in spiritual warfare if the two of you are one. If you labor together as one, whereas when you are alone, the devil can overpower you. But two of you teaming together, what does the Bible say? Two can withstand the enemy. The two of you, you can withstand the enemy, which means God has made provision for victory in spiritual warfare at home. So that you don't even need to be running helter-skelter to prayer houses when Satan comes attacking. Two can withstand the enemy. And a threefold cord, you, your wife or husband, and God in the midst of you, the threefold cord cannot be quickly broken. That's the power of teaming up together as husband and wife. It has great effect. It has great power in accomplishing God's purpose. God knew it. He himself started working as a team. And he put the husband and wife together to exemplify this team spirit. You know, in Matthew chapter 18, 
Jesus himself, as if to say, look, I don't undermine the power of agreement between two people, especially a husband and a wife. Matthew 18, verses 18 and 19. Matthew 18, 18 and 19. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth, <coughs> what will happen in heaven? It will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they shall ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Can you see the power of agreement? The power of oneness that God expects when two people team together. Anything you will agree upon on earth. And when God says anything, what does that mean? Anything at all. Physical or spiritual. That you will agree upon as touching upon this earth. My father will certainly do it for them. There is power in oneness. There is power in agreement. There is power in laboring together as one. God himself comes to inhabit a couple's uh, matrimony where they are one. He said, I'm there in their midst. Anything can happen. He can do anything since his presence will be in the midst of such a couple. He delights in using a team, but a team that work together as one. You will discover that right from Adam, the work of God on earth was committed into the hands of that team, not into the hands of Adam alone. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, when God created the man and his wife, what did he do? He handed over all creation into their hands, into the hands of this husband and wife. And you know, the best team that can agree together at all levels of agreement. Agreement spiritually, agreement in the mind, and agreement bodily. Which team can agree like that? The husband and wife. All the other people, all the other teams, they may agree together in spirit. Are you getting me? But they may not agree in mind or in body. Actually, they won't even agree in body. But the perfect team that can agree together at all levels, an agreement that will be strong and achieve God's purpose at all the three levels, the team that can achieve it is the husband and wife. So God came and put everything into the hands of this husband and wife. Because he knows if they team up together, there is nothing that the devil can do about the earth. When they teamed up together to fall into the hands of the devil, they also achieved it. Isn't it? There's power in teaming up. God wants us to team up to achieve his purpose. He believes in a team. When he was bringing the savior of the world, he put him in a team of a husband and a wife. So God believes in our matrimony. God believes in your matrimony. There is something eternal that he wants to commit into your hands as a team, as a husband and wife, so that his purpose on earth will be achieved, but we must be one. 
we must be one. In Psalm 133, you remember that scripture? Psalm 133, verses 1 to 3. Um, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. How? In unity. Psalm 133. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the beard, running down on the beard. The beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hammon, descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there, God commands the blessing. For there, the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. We are a husband and wife dwell together in unity. There, God commands what? A blessing and life forevermore. Blessings come, blessings come upon such a couple by command. It's not something you even pray for. God commands it. He will load you with blessings when you dwell together in unity. There is a lot to accomplish if we dwell together as husband and wife as one. Oneness is so crucial in our matrimony. If we are going to achieve and maximize the purpose of God for setting our home up, we must be one. It's not enough just to be married but we must be one. And God has stated it clearly in this issue of marriage over and over again, both in the Old and in the New Testament. He said, I'm putting you together so that you may be one. That is the first thing to achieve. That is the goal of God to achieve, the primary goal before we now achieve the purpose of God. The work of God will be done and we will accomplish it. Again, turn with me to Genesis chapter 11. I'm just perusing the scriptures for you to know the power of oneness in marriage. Genesis chapter 11 verse <clears throat> verse 5 and verse 6. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one. Let me read, let me read from verse 4. It will be a bit more um, clear. It will be clearer to us. Verse 4. And they said, Come. Let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, uh, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord, uh, the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one. And they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Does that look like Matthew 18 verse 19 that we read? Nothing that they put their hands to do shall be withheld from them. Look at the, the, the aspect where these people were one, it's unfortunate that they were one in a negative thing. God said to them, scatter all over the earth. They said, let us build a tower so that we will not scatter. That was contrary to God's will. But because they were one, because they had one voice over that matter, God himself testified, if we don't scatter them, there is nothing they stand to do that they propose to do 
hope that will be withheld from them. Even when that thing is a wrong thing. The power of oneness. When you, you are one with one voice, with one heart, and even with one body, you agree together with your spouse, there is nothing that you propose to do that will be withheld from you. There is nothing you even pray about that God will not answer. In a little way, we have experienced this. And I'm just praying that we will experience it much more. Maybe the work of God would have blown much more than this. What God is saying is this. That oneness is such a crucial ingredient that will enable you to be able to maximize your relationship and fulfill the purpose of God. Oneness is the key. God is saying, these people, they have started to become one. And I know that nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Can you imagine many areas of life where we have been failures? What we are tempted doing that we have failed simply because we are not one. Of course, sometimes when what we want to do is contrary to God's will, he will do what he did in Genesis 11. He will quickly rush to come and scatter what you are doing because he knows if you are one, even in a wrong thing, nothing shall be withheld from you, so he will scatter it. But we are not even one. That's the issue. Even in the purpose of God, we are not one. Even pastors are not one with their wives. And the wives are not willing to go with their husbands. So how can God's work move forward? Look at the issue of our children. We are not one. We don't have one voice in dealing with them. The daddy says this and mommy says the other one. And both of them are claiming authority and spirit, uh, 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 superiority over the lives of the children. And so the children go wayward because we are not one even in raising them. Daddy spanks the child. Mommy brings the child back and says, don't mind your daddy. Ah! You finish that child already. God's purpose cannot be achieved in the life of that child. Oneness is powerful. When you are one over any issue, nothing that you propose to do will be withheld from you. Even when a child is going to make a wrong choice in marriage, especially Christian children, and they are making a wrong choice, and you stamp your feet on the ground, and you talked, and you prayed, and you shouted on the child. The child said, Dad, this is what I want. After all, I'm the one that will marry the person. I love him. Marry him for me. You know, that was what Samson said to the parents. I love her. She pleases me well. Marry her for me. Even when the parents were saying, ah, where will you go and marry a Philistine? Is there no beautiful girl among your people? Say, Dad, don't speak to me. Marry her for me. She suits me well. I wish they also knew the power of agreement, the power of oneness. They could have knelt down and canceled that thing. And then just be watching the child roam up and down. And very shortly, the relationship will scatter. Because the father and mother have agreed over that issue. Are you getting me this morning? Whatever it will cost, oneness is the primary thing to, to pursue. Because that is the primary thing that God wants to achieve. If we are going to fulfill God's purpose and maximize it. When there is division among us, we can't get anything. Eh? What happens when a house is divided against itself? It will scatter. It will fall. Oneness 
is what God is looking for in our relationship. If we are one, especially before God, over any issue in the family, even over the ministry, nothing that we propose to do will be withheld from us. A situation in which the wife is saying one thing, the husband is saying another, even in ministry. Or a situation in which the husband would not want to involve his wife. Say, what do you know? God called me. It's me, God called. What do you know? Go and sit down, my friend. Go and take care of my children for me. Ah. You are already dividing your home. Even that ministry will not stand. Oneness is the very important ingredient that God is looking for in our relationship. And he himself will just come and say, I'm here for you because you are one. He will move you forward and move you to a higher ground in his purpose as you pursue oneness. The Bible says in Amos chapter 3 verse 3, can two work together except they be agreed? What is the answer? No, they can't work together. This agreement, this oneness is what we must first pursue. That's the reason. Do you know it is to achieve this oneness that God decided to tell the wife, wives, submit to your own husband. It is to achieve oneness so that you will not go to heaven empty-handed while you are sticking to your guns. The purpose of God is wasting away and you are not going to achieve it. So God says, wives, submit to, the, to your husband. And the same reason is the same reason why God tells the husband, husbands, love your wife. Deal with them according to knowledge. Otherwise, your prayers will be hindered. It is to achieve oneness. But you see, because we don't know, sometimes you find reasons why you, you cannot love this woman. Say, hey, if she wants me to love her, let her submit to me. And the wife is also saying, if he wants me to submit to him, let him show me love. So, both of you, you are sticking to your guns. If you continue that way, how will your home stand? And how will you fulfill the purpose of God? Oneness is what God wants to achieve. And we are going to be praying together this morning. It is important that we pursue oneness in our relationship much more than anything else. Pursue oneness much more than your own personal convenience. Pursue oneness. That is the plan and purpose of God. Pursue oneness. Oneness in spirit. Oneness in your understanding of spiritual things. Studying the Bible together. Going to fellowship together. Going to church together. Let it not be that there is a husband and wife here who goes to different churches. How can you prove your oneness like that? Oneness in the spirit. So that you will understand the will of God together. Oneness in your mind. God is aiming at it. That in your understanding of things, in your perception, you will be one. You will, you will communicate your mind to one another for understanding. This oneness, God is looking for it. And whatever it will cost, we will achieve it. Oneness in the body. Conjugal relationship is part of the oneness that God is looking for. When you are one in all these dimensions, there is nothing that you lay your hands upon that will be withheld from you. Whatever struggles we have 
experienced in our relationship together. We must not allow anything to divide between us. Nothing must separate between us because it is too costly. The repercussion of being divided is too expensive. The Bible says anyone who breaks an edge, serpent will bite him. The serpent is biting many in the homes and even the children are being beaten by the serpent because of division in the midst of the parents. The serpent is biting us in many ways because we are not united. We are all sticking to ourselves. The human nature will not let us. And if it says it's going that way, me, I'm going this way. Let everybody go his own way. In the night, we will meet in the bedroom. Is that the plan of God? Look at a lot of wastage. Wastage in our homes because we are not one. God is saying, if you are going to achieve God's purpose, pursue oneness. Pursue it. Oneness, you won't get it just like that. You have to pursue it. Sometimes you have to lay down something in order to get it. You have to lay down your, your own opinion in order to get oneness. You have to lay down your convenience in order to get oneness. You have to pursue it at all costs, by all means, because Satan, our adversary, is not sleeping. Apart from the fact that you will not achieve God's purpose, Satan is not sleeping over your home. Is going about, going about. Wherever he can find a division, he will creep in to bite. He's not our friend. You are going to pursue oneness at all costs, by all means, and say, Lord, whatever it will cost me to be one with my husband, with my wife, I will do it. Money is not strong enough to divide husband and wife. You must make up your mind and say, money? What is money? Unrighteous mammon. How will I allow that to hinder me from being one from my spouse, with my spouse? Lord, you will help me this morning. Conjugal relationship must not be strong enough to bring division. Nothing, career must not divide between you. That career must go. What is career? You can get career anytime, but you can't get your spouse anytime. If you lose your career, you can get it any other time, but if you lose your marriage, you are finished. Even eternally, you are finished. Our marriage, as we have been looking at it, is so precious. Nothing can be compared with it. Nothing must be allowed to bring separation between us. When we are one, the Bible says, there is nothing that we put our hands to do that will be withheld from us. You are going to stand up with me this morning. Maybe there are aspects of your marital relationship where there has been division. And you already know how serpent is biting you. Maybe we have allowed all kinds of personal idiosyncrasies and sentiments to bring division among us. The flesh, the human nature has crept in and you are sticking to your own guns. You are going to let down that gun this morning and say, Lord, I lay it down. This precious equipment, my marriage, that you gave me, how can I exchange it for any other thing? How will I let go all the advantages of oneness that the Lord has shown us? Money cannot buy those things. Is it money you are pursuing that is bringing division among you? Or is it the way you spend money at home? that you have allowed to bring the vision, you will let it down this morning and say, Lord, help me. Help me 
so that there will be nothing between me and my spouse. Take away from me whatever brings division. Whatever it will cost for us to be one, help me to pay the price. Would you like to stand up as we pray together? concerning this your relationship will you please plead with God look at what has brought division among you oh how wonderful God would have performed in your midst if only you are one how great a thing God would have done in your midst if only you have been one. How wonderful your children would have been if you have trained them with one voice. Oh, what a great ministry God would have accomplished if only you have been one. Plead with God this morning Make us one, Lord. Make us one, Lord, wherever I have contributed unto bringing division between us, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. this morning. See the useless things that we are clinging to that will not let us be one. Oh, the Bible says those who cling to worthless idols they forsake the grace that could have been theirs. idols to their selfish gain they forsake the grace that could have been theirs beg God for mercy this morning Lord have mercy on me wherever I have allowed a crack in our relationship forgive me oh Lord childishness will not let you go you are childish. Even with your gray hair, you are childish in marriage. Ah. Look at the great things at stake. Eternal things. Oh, Lord, have mercy upon us this morning. Have mercy upon us, oh God. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Lord, restore our oneness, Lord. Restore our oneness, Lord. Those who 
cling to worthless idols. They forsake the grace that could have been theirs. What are you clinging to? Eh, he doesn't love me. Eh, he doesn't provide for me. Worthless idols. Eh, she doesn't respect me. Eh, she doesn't submit to me. Worthless idols. Lord have mercy this morning. Father, intervene, intervene in our relationships, intervene this morning. Wherever there is a crack, let there be healing. Wherever there is a division, bring us to Together, bring restoration. Let there be oneness. Help us, oh God. Help us, oh God. Don't allow us to lose the grace that could have been ours. Don't allow us to miss the eternal things that you want to accomplish by our hands. Oh, Father. Ah, your two could have been better than one if only you will let down the gun your two could have been better than one if only you will say no to yourself if only you will learn to deny yourself. If only you will learn to let go and let God have his way. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, help us this morning. Rika Sanda Kuria, Padi Bosaikas Kuribo Shiva, Eri Mama Mama Maluba Saikas Kuribo Saya, Ira Pasanda Kuria Bosai. Ask the Lord to help you this morning. Ask the Lord to help you. The oneness will be your primary pursuit in this relationship. is in trouble today because the marital relationships in it are scattered. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy this morning. Let grace descend upon us. Have mercy this morning. Make us one, Lord. Restore our oneness, Lord. Pray, pray. Lead with God. You are no longer talking 
fluently together, you are no friends. Short wave communication. You are not deep spirited friends. Plead with God that God will take away that rubbish. Let him bind you together. Let the spirit of forgiveness descend upon us. Whatever the heart, let the spirit of grace come upon us now to forgive one another. Hold your spouse, hold your spouse even now and pray, Lord, make us one. Make us one, Lord. Hold one another and beg God. Oh, see what you could have achieved. See how much God's name would have been glorified. Even those pursuing a career in the name of the Lord, when you are one with your spouse, things become easy. Beg God, Lord, make us one. Make us one. Deal with me, Lord. Me, me, it's me. Deal with me. Whatever hinders oneness, deal with me to let it go. Deal with me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help us, Lord. Make us one. Parabasanta Karima Shira Basaya Kaskai. Idabasanta Karima Surya. Uribasaika. Please pray. Your children are unfortunate if you are not one. They will suffer the attack. Unfortunate, innocent children. Beg God. Even the kingdom of God will suffer if you are not one. Oh, Lord, please have mercy today. Intervene in our situations. Intervene, we beg you. There's a lot ahead of us. Even our nation is suffering because we are not one at home. Intervene, O oh Lord. Oh Lord, intervene. Reka saya basanda kuri abashira baba kuri basai. Eri masanda kuri basai kaskuria. Ah, Father, help us. what the Lord says in Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 even 1 to 3 if you have gotten anything at all out of following Christ if his love has made any difference in your life if being in a community of the spirit means anything to you if you have a heart if you care, then do me a favor. Agree with each other. Love each other. Be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't 
sweet, talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. God says, if you have a heart, if following Jesus means anything to you, if, if being in the community of the Spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, God says, do me a favor. Ah! God, knowing that being one will achieve a lot in his kingdom, is begging us this morning. Do me a favor. Jesus is saying to you, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Agree with each other. Love each other. Be deep spirited friends. Will you pray this morning? I will do it. Help me, God. I will do it. For, even for the sake of my love for Jesus. For the sake of his purpose on earth. I will love my wife. I will love my husband. We will agree together. We will be one. Will you make that commitment to God this morning? And ask the Lord to help you. Oh, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Following Jesus means a lot to me. How can I throw that away? Because of a problem between me and my spouse. How can I throw away your presence? Oh, God, help me. Help me and my spouse to be one. Lord, help me. We will be deep-spirited friends. If there is any hurt, I forgive her. I forgive him. Ha! Ah, how can you be begging me to do you a favor? Oh, God, have mercy on me. Take away my heart of stone. Lord, touch my heart. Change my heart. Help me, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Our Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for your heart cry concerning our relationships. Thank you, Father, because of the dividends that you are expecting from our relationship for it to yield to the kingdom of God. And this morning, you are begging us, you are asking us for favor from you to be united. For us to be united and become one. Lord, we are pleading with you. Help us in the name of Jesus. Wherever there is a crack, Wherever there is division, wherever the devil has come in to bite, Father, we beg you this morning, let there be healing in the name of Jesus. Let there be oneness in the name of Jesus. Wherever our fences have been cracked, wherever the serpent is creeping in to bite, even some of our children are already being beaten. Father, heal us in the name of Jesus. Bring healing in the name of Jesus. Bring restoration to our relationships in the name of Jesus. We now plead with you, O oh God, whatever has been the problem, and we are sticking to our guns, we let go today in the name of Jesus. Give us a heart of forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Take away our stony heart. Give us a heart of flesh, your very heart, in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask, oh Lord, that we will pursue oneness. Nothing will be compared with it in our hearts. We will not allow anything to replace oneness in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Help us to be one. Make 
us one, Lord, that these homes that you have brought to this place at a time like this, we will pursue the purpose of God and we will fulfill it in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, that as we pursue oneness, your will will prosper in our hands. Your will will prosper in our hands. It will prosper in the church. It will prosper in our nation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Charity begins at home, they say. If this thing does not begin in the home, how will the church be united? How will the nation be edified and be built up? Father, heal our homes in the name of Jesus. Heal our relationships in the name of Jesus. We are pleading with you that from this moment, oneness will be our goal. We will pursue it more than our necessary food. We will lay down our conveniences to be one in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen.